Um, brilliant. So I can see we've got a few people joining, but we can't see who's joined. So if you've joined, can you just give us a little bit of a hey in the chat and make sure that it's the session tab at the top right hand corner. And can you tell I work in software and describe to you how to use the software? <laughs> <laughs> Um, brilliant. How long have you been doing Kraken marketing? Um, it started in like April, just after lockdown. So, oh, yeah, yeah, about 18 months. And you, and you also spoke last year at our I conference. Did, yeah, you're returning. Um, That's how good it was. <laughs> <laughs> I also hosted one year when it was back when things were in person. Yeah, you know what. We were saying, come on, 2022, we need to have at least a hybrid event. <laughs> you know, I'm still a bit nervous to do things in person. So yeah, well, I think online. maybe next next September we'll all feel a little bit, you know, so-so. Yeah, <laughs> but it would be nice even be, to be together in a smaller setting. Yeah. Even if it's not hundreds of people. Yeah, some more casual meetups to like ease me into society <laughs> yeah 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 we'll be looking at that towards the end of the year beginning of next really just waiting on what's happening yeah um hi tony nice hey, to tony. see ya give awesomeness with lissa can be i think guaranteed i think yeah i think that's gonna happen Do you know what? The, oh it's not as many gifts as normal but there's like <gasps> Other things. Other oh, things wow. Happening. <laughs> wow. I know. Um, <laughs> Tony cannot believe it. What? <sighs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I'll make up for it on Twitter. Don't worry. Oh, you always do. You always <laughs> deliver. We trust you. We trust you. Brilliant. Oh. Excellent. So um, we are nearly at quarter past. Perfect. So if you want to hit recall, if, if you want to do your thing, um, then we'll start listening to your talk and um, get this show on the road. Perfect. We're back. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, there were so many great examples in there. I've also really loved the Etsy one. Yes. It um, makes you feel really good watching that, doesn't it? It's yeah, really good at. because in a way, so one of the funny things is if you, so as, because I'm German, I've lived here for 12 years, so in some eyes I'm not local and in other eyes I'm very local because I don't <laughs> belong to either. But one of the things about, for example, my name, although it's very easily spelled, it's S-A-R-A-H, the pronunciation Sarah is actually not my name. That is not what I was called when I was growing up because the German pronunciation is Zara which is a very different name. So in it, that is just a little bit of a way, actually, where sometimes I'm like, mm, that's not my name, but I've sort of accepted it. <laughs> yeah. um, and obviously, with your um, ac uh, accent, and for example, now you see it on the fey of your yeah. name. So you guys, if you can see uh, there, it actually, Hoppin doesn't accept it either. No. <laughs> and um, I find that really interesting because actually we're not just alienating individuals, we're actually <laughs> alienating whole language groups. Yeah. Right. And I think it's either my passport or my driving license. One of them has it on, one of them doesn't because it's not possible. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, apparently Tom uh, Connolly says, Connolly, sorry. Uh, I like that you seem to be answering my questions as fast as I can think of them. Basically, oh. you cracked mind reading. How amazing oh, is that? Winning. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just going to go up and pick out the questions that sure. did come in. Okay, uh, Juliana Turnbull, who's also one of our speakers, is asking, why is inclusivity a subject people have avoided for so long and why now are people starting to take notice? I think... Um, Sometimes it feels really scary to talk about it as well, because you're like, who am I to talk on this subject? Um, and I think quite often people are really worried about doing things wrong, so they just <laughs> don't do things. Um, but also, I think more people are making space and doing it and showing that it's viable for businesses. Like I mentioned Fenty Beauty and the, the foundation. Since Rihanna did that, lots of other brands are following suit, whereas before they said it wasn't financially responsible for them to do that because they there wasn't the demand and now they're seeing there's the demand so more people are broaching it which is fantastic and i think we just need to be having conversations and willing to learn and willing to listen um but yeah i think it's 
it's taking way too long to happen at the same time. Um, and I know I mentioned right at the start, particularly with racial diversity, how very white Cornwall is. I think sometimes <laughs> it's ridiculous. I think people feel like they're being inauthentic if they use people of color in their marketing, if mm. it's not reflected in their team. But we need to kind of get over it <laughs> and just start being more inclusive mm. because then it will feel more authentic as we continue to grow and do it. I think people are also maybe a bit scared to offend Right. Definitely. So if I think of uh, friends of mine who are uh, in the LGBTQ plus community, actually sometimes asking questions because you're curious can feel really risky. Yeah. Um, because you're scared that you won't, that, that you will say something that will offend the other person, however they may define. Yeah. But actually, if you were speaking to a, sorry, I'm thinking at the same time, if you're speaking to a <laughs> member of your, the same persuasion, yeah, you might ask that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, who do you think is fit? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's a normal question. But somehow there is an awkwardness around that. And actually, I think we all have sort of that power to create um, connectivity between us and actually you know even me asking like hey can I ask you a question and it might be a bit borderline <laughs> so if it's borderline I'm really sorry but I'm just curious and I, I I'm I'm 98% sure that in 98% of the times that happens the other person will go go on then yeah I think it comes if it's coming from a place of good oh yeah so absolutely. welcoming and respectful of it but I did see um, particularly during Black History Month a lot of content online from black creators saying stop asking me <laughs> because people were just asking them questions and not taking the time to do their own research mm -hmm. then asking them to create content for them but not paying them for their time come and do an instagram live for us or come and write an article but not paying them so yeah that, that's like performative you're not respecting these black creators and the time and effort they're putting in to make your brand look better mm. so there was a lot of um i guess pushback about the onus is on you like Co <laughs> correct yeah yeah exactly um, and i think i think that is also something to be sort of mindful of actually there is stuff you can learn online but there's stuff you, you can't learn online and i think knowing the difference and taking you know taking that further and going i read some stuff and i have some questions yeah. is probably one of the best things to sort of go about it Definitely. um Rachel Hammond, also another one of our speakers, says, I really like the target audience review. Have you got any resource to help with this? I can definitely have a quick look and try and tweet some things out afterwards. Um, I've done it a few times myself, but each one's been so tailored to the product or service I was working with in the audience. And sometimes it's as simple as like creating a survey monkey and offering an iPad to people that respond to it. Like, you get put in a drawer or something, not everyone, uh, just to enc <laughs> encourage people to respond. Spenny. If, yeah. <laughs> if you've got like already a focus group of people, like say, for example, your social media followers, that's like already kind of an engaged group of people that you could then speak to and say, how does this make you feel? Do you feel represented? Ask some really good questions. And then you'll get excellent qualified feedback. Amazing. Um, Tony says, great talk. Um, any tips on making our collective social media experience, uh, presence more accessible? Yes. Um, oh, so many things. So if you're wanting to make kind of imagery um, more accessible and inclusive, kind of really do an exercise of putting yourself in someone else's shoes. So like really get in the mindset of someone else and look for your feed and think, do I feel seen? Do I feel represented? Mm. Um, and you could do the same with language as well. Oh, I learned something the other day about accessibility of social media, and I'm devastated about it. Apparently, don't use emojis as bullet points because it's really bad for screen readers. And I've been doing that constantly for ages. So I need to change. <laughs> so <laughs> funnily enough, uh, dearest Tony, we actually have a specific talk about accessibility in social media as oh, well by Rebecca perfect. Broad Amazing. on this oh. track later today. And let me tell you when at 1 p.m. 
amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she'll be able to answer much better than me. <laughs> oh, bless you. No worries. That was a really good start of an answer. Um, so um, guys, you can hang around and ask the some more questions. I'll have to buzz off. Um, and I know that you have also got Lissa's Twitter handle, etc. And she's very active on Twitter. Um, just in a little FYI, at 12, we have a bit of a 15-minute coffee break. Yay! <laughs> and then it continues. So the guys uh, on track one will be, or main stage, will be talking you guys through everything. But thank you so much, Lisa, to oh, for you. for your dedication to <laughs> to helping us become more inclusive. And I really appreciate um, you and everything you do. And I think actually, as a as a voice of uh, of many diverse <laughs> communities <laughs> I think uh, your voice is probably a really important one for us to continue to listen to as well so I just wanted to thank you oh, thank you so much I appreciate that <laughs> brilliant see you later guys um so yeah we've got a couple of minutes before the break if anyone's got any more questions feel free to ping them at me or I can just stand here and do jazz hands for four minutes please don't make me do that <laughs> um <laughs> and Tony, I hope you didn't mind the slight lack of gifts in my talk, but they were replaced with more actual video content this time. So hopefully that was an okay alternative to my normally extremely gift heavy presentations. Six out of ten. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh hey Charlotte. Um connect with me on Twitter or um on my LinkedIn. Um yeah, give me a shout. <laughs> be more than happy to chat about it more after the event. The question I had was because I wanted to talk about accessibility and many conferences did not want to have me present. Oh no, that really sucks. Um, to be honest, I haven't talked a lot about accessibility and inclusivity at conferences. I've done one talk about diversity in tech um, <laughs> and um, quite often I talk about data-driven marketing or agile marketing. So um, the fact that this conference theme was about access made it um, seem like the really logical thing to talk about because it's something I'm really focusing on a lot myself and trying to make improvements in um, and with a lot of the companies I work with. So it's been a great opportunity to talk about it. But I think more conferences are getting involved in accessibility but the ones that aren't if you look at a speaker lineup and you've agreed to speak somewhere and then you see a really non-diverse panel you can withdraw and I've definitely done that before when I thought I don't like this lineup it's not diverse it doesn't represent who I feel as a as a person so I'm just gonna moonwalk back out of here doing some awkward finger guns um what's my way to use swear word in external comms um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a few. Um, I don't know if I can say them, if it fits with the conference code of conduct. So, Tony, speak to me later and I'll just send you a barrage of swear words that I use regularly. Um, I reserve some of the more heavy level ones for to not be used as often, so then they, they pack more of a punch. Um, Sometimes I like to say mother hucking, like flight of the Concords, because you know exactly what I mean, but you can't be offended. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, Julia, I had to talk about voice search and share the results from a survey. Oh, that sounds really cool. Um, I'm going to check that out and follow that link. And I think keep submitting to conferences, do some research into the ones that you think are more progressive. Um, approach meetups, maybe even just host yourself a live webinar on Zoom or something um, so people can hop on and join. I think the more you start putting yourself out there, um, the more it gets picked up. And if you're making a name for yourself and you can back it up with evidence of, I've talked about this and people really like it, that might help. Um, but there's conferences that are like specifically about um, accessibility on the web and voice search it's becoming more of a thing. Um, obviously, there's loads of SEO conferences. It's Brighton SEO this week, actually. I don't know if you submitted there. They were really keen on getting lots of first-time speakers and people that didn't want just like rocks our names involved this year, which was great to see. 
Um, anyway, it is coffee break time. So I will let you all go. Uh, Juliana, it's been lush having your questions. Feel free to connect with me and we can carry on chatting about um, how we can take over the world with our talks about accessibility. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.